After decades of silence, a British woman has been given a chance to hear for the first time thanks to some amazing surgery. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. It's a big, big, life-changing day today. Can you hear your own voice? Good. That's Joanne Milton. She's 39. Her new cochlear implants now allow her to hear, and likely, apparently, hearing the woman right across from her. Since this video has gone viral, Milna has had quite a change in her life, as you can imagine. She has a rare condition. It's called Usher syndrome. And because of it, she was born profoundly deaf. But now, she says she cherishes what, you know, we consider to be everyday experiences, things like hearing the honk of a car horn or the sound of a voice. I, I love these stories every time we do them. The emotional yeah, reaction is just pretty so amazing. Intense. Because any sensation of hearing is, is I mean, it's something that, that, that they've never experienced. Right. The latest report from the Centers for Disease Control found one in 68 children in America has autism. And they say that's up 30% from the previous year. That alone is startling. We're going to get into that. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that there's a huge spike in autism, but it does mean that doctors are getting better at diagnosing it. The question is, where do all of us parents go for help? Ariva Martin is the author of The Everyday Advocate, Standing Up for Your Child with Autism or Other Special Needs. She's also the president and co-founder of the Special Needs Network and the mother of an autistic child, so we understand your passion. Ariva Martin. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Just glad to be able to talk about autism because you can't turn on the television or pick up a newspaper and not see the word or hear some story I think about all, it. We all know somebody. Yes, who has a family a child. member, yes. a coworker, a neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's impacting so many children today. Mm -hmm. But that's because the spectrum of autism has grown so wide that it almost seems unfair or a little bit of a, of a misrepresentation to use one word that can mean so many different things. And a lot of families family members and parents and experts feel that way, Jeff, but it's really important that they know that that label can be very important. Okay. And it's important because it drives services. So I know families are often reluctant to you know, embrace the diagnosis, but in California in particular, to get the kind of services that kids with autism need, they have to be diagnosed with autism. So although it's a broad and it is a spectrum disorder, it's really important if your child has any developmental warning signs that you not ignore them and Let's that get you get that. help. Let's get into that. Chris, what's the and first one? Well, part of the reason we're here also is Autism Awareness Day. Yes. Autism well, Awareness true. Month is yes. next month or April. Yes, April. Uh, so let's talk about some tips for parents because so many we know are, are yes. trying to figure out how to proceed with their child. Yes. Number one, recognizing the warning signs of autism. Talk about the signs. It can be as simple as a child not following your eye contact, not responding to his or her name. How early At what age, yeah. Oh, yeah. As exactly. early as exactly. six months. And there's wow. studies that are finding that you can diagnose a child as early as 12 months. Mm. Uh, playing with toys differently. So if you give a little boy cars, most little boys are going to take those cars and race them. Mm -hmm. Kids with autism are going to line those toys up in a repetitive fashion. They may do the same thing with crayons. Rather than color with the crayons, they're going to put them in lines. Uh, repetitive behaviors. If you notice that your child isn't engaging with other kids, if he'd rather be in a corner or, you know, isolated from... Or even okay. engaging with you as a parent. Engaging with you as a parent, absolutely. Dogs, right? Cuddling yeah. is a big uh, sign. Cuddling, do they want to cuddle or don't? don't? They don't want to cuddle. They have a lot of sensory issues. So a lot of kids with autism, they can't uh, take certain fabrics or you right. know, certain materials being next to their skin. Even loud mm. noises okay, can so, irritate some so kids. So let's say, let's say, Ariva, that you are, your child is a year old, a year and a half old, and you're having these concerns. Yes. How do you choose the type of the right type of doctor? You, do you just go to your pediatrician? You start with the pediatrician because your pediatrician can then refer you to specialists. There are psychologists and there are other professionals trained to do nothing but diagnose kids who have a range of developmental disabilities like autism. And then what we know about autism, no medicine, you know, no surgery, but lots of therapies. So Art kids with autism need 
you know, therapies, behavior therapy, in speech school. therapy, occupational therapies, and special education and services. Schools can help diagnose this. Schools can give you an assessment for free, and okay. schools can also provide educational services and other interventions. Does, does this fall under an ADA thing at school? Yes, American ADA, which prohibits Act. discrimination against children with disabilities, absolutely. Okay. But the more important law for kids with autism is called IDEA, oh. and it's a federal law that mandates that kids with autism and other disabilities receive a free free education. So that means if your child needs, say, an assistant, you can actually get a one-to-one -one aid that will accompany your child to school. Wow. Uh, your child may oh. need special, uh, like, recreational therapy, special physical therapy. There are lots of interventions. So Gosh. even though the numbers are high, right. there's a lot of hope. We have come so far, but I think an important thing to note is for a parent who has a child with autism is to prepare for that diagnosis is, yeah, and then that? prepare to get that help. Yes. What does prepare mean? Mentally prepare, prepare means psychologically, yeah. spiritually, mentally, and not be afraid. So many parents, you know, they get worried about the label and they go into denial. And I was one of those parents. I couldn't say the word autism without weeping. And I'm a lawyer and I'm a, you know, a, an advocate, but it was so painful for me initially. But I want parents to know there are other parents. There's a huge network. There are families mm -hmm. like them where you can find comfort, you can find support. So don't shy away. You know, embrace it because you're child can get the help and make tremendous progress. My son Marty didn't talk until he was four. All right, there's an event coming up in April yes. for Autism Awareness yes. Month. Let's take a look here. Uh, it's a special needs conference, April 11th and 12th, and the location is the Junior Blind of America. Yes, as free, as free conference, lots hmm. of workshops, information, resources. So if you have a child or you think your child may be having some challenges, this is a conference you want to attend, and free I, and resources. SNN.org, special needs. Special needs not <laughs> specialneedsnetwork.org you can find all the Got information it. and register for the conference. And the key there is that there is hope and there Lots is and the earlier you get started with treatment. Early intervention yeah. is key because then you can get those much needed interventions. All right. Reva, boy you're a passionate advocate. <laughs> we thank you for coming in and, what you. and how is your child doing? Marty is doing fantastic. He was one That's of the great. lucky kids. He got diagnosed early and got great intervention so he's and a, 14 and, and 6 feet tall. parent <laughs> who went forward. That's great. Yes, he's very Reva Martin, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank Thank you. you. Hey,